Hey, what's up, Redskins Nation? This is me, Dre. Haven't made a video in about two, three weeks. Listen, the organization is in disarray. Uh, we're basically out of the playoffs. We just lost to the Titans. And then the following day, guess what? DJ Swearinger gets cut. He's cut because he had criticism of Greg Minerski and his defensive play calling. Now, I understand that as a player, it can be detrimental to air out your grievances to the media. At the same time, DJ Swearinger being the defensive leader of the team, the heart and soul of that defense, the playmaker, whatever you call it, yeah, he's had some faults, but at the same time, you're talking about a player that's passionate about winning. If you're not into winning, then you should be on a team. So his critique of uh, Greg Minerski's play calling is no different than us as fans who have seen the trash that's been put out on the field. When you consider the fact that we played uh, the New Orleans Saints after coming off a of bye week and how we looked like complete shit on primetime, and then all of a sudden the Saints play the Dallas Cowboys and get embarrassed. Look at how we played against the Atlanta Falcons where they were down to having a linebacker as a reserve offensive lineman because the offensive line was so depleted. Even though they had a lot of illegal picks, and I can go on and on about that, the fact of the matter is they beat us. And who did they get embarrassed by? The Dallas Cowboys. Are the Dallas Cowboys a better team than us? Uh, statistically, when it comes to their win-loss record, yes, they are. But do they have more talent than we do? I don't think they do. Uh, we can go on and say that there's injuries, but any team has injuries. You know, any good team can plug in a backup player and the machine keeps moving. Look at the Patriots, and even though I hate to bring up the Patriots, they are the best example because those guys, uh, when the backups come in, it's their opportunity to show that they deserve to be part of the starting, starting lineup. When you look back at when Drew Bledsoe was injured, uh, which basically spelled his career with the Patriots and Tom Brady came in. They didn't have a great season that year, but the following year they went to the Super Bowl and won. So fast forward to 2018 and we have trash ass Jay Gruden with his vanilla soft serve play calling and it's been a shit show. Look at our record since Jay Gruden came on to the squad. We've been basically first place one time. Every other time, we've either, we've either been third place or fourth place in the NFC East. We can't be respected as an organization we, when we have a head coach that's ill-prepared after a bye week, who comes up with bullshit excuses, and then ends up uh, basically cutting a player for speaking his mind. Again, I don't condone what Swearinger said, but conduct detrimental to the team. It's not like he beat someone like Ruben Fossey. Yes, I'm driving, pardon me, but I'm parking my car. But uh, we pick up Ruben Foster, who was um, dropped from the 49ers for domestic abuse. And I'm not going to hold that against him because you, we picked up uh, Dante Stallworth and he had been out of the league because he killed a guy uh, when he was uh, with the Patriots. So what it all boils down to is this. They could have benched him. They could have not allowed him to start for the final game of the season. But to cut a defensive player because he's passionate about winning, when you look at our record, how we came in at first place and then shit started to fall apart and we fell all the way to third place. If you're not pissed off about that, then you're not a Redskins fan. And DJ Swearinger had a major point. We lost to Blaine Gabbard. Trash ass Blaine Gabbard. You're supposed to frazzle someone like him. He came in there and he passed all over us looking like Drew Brees. I'm pissed off about that. If you're not pissed off about that, you're certainly not a Redskins fan. I would imagine you're not even a football fan if you're not upset that trash ass Blaine Gabbert beat us the way he did. Every time they got the ball or if we scored, they were able to match or reciprocate on a scoring drive themselves. Our defense couldn't get off the field because of the defense of the uh, defensive play calling by Minerski. I know a lot of people are uh, critical of uh, Josh Norman because he gets burnt, yeah. But when you look at the defensive scheme, the question that you need to ask is, are we really using him the correct way? Are we using any of our defenders the right way? Because Ryan Kerrigan, he started to show up in the second half of the season, but we're not getting the appropriate amount of pressure. We're not getting a lot of the turnovers that we need. And of course, the offense has to play their part. But there's only so much a defense can do when the offense gets on the field. 
Well, and they're quick three and out, and the defense has to get back on the field to tie it. No matter how staunch of a defense you are, that's going to wear you down. There's going to be mental errors, missed tackles, missed assignments, so on and so forth. This is basic football that we as fans understand. But as a Redskins fan, and you see him representing because I got this shirt for Christmas, we as Redskins fans, all we want is a win. And if you live here in Texas like I do, you know there's nothing worse or just anywhere, there's nothing worse than when we were boasting about being in first place and telling Cowboys fans to shut the hell up and know their place. And now the roles have reversed. Look at us, third place, third place, beaten bad by the Giants. We got them the first time that they, they just embarrassed us the second time. We have one last game against the Eagles. It's hopeful that we can play the spoiler and knock them out of the playoffs end the season at eight and eight but the cowboys have won the nfc east we had that opportunity but a combination of bad play calling yeah the injuries had the, their role but at the same time again these are things that you can expect from any team for injuries but there's just a lack of preparation poor leadership poor discipline when you look at the fact that morgan moses and i'm critical of him but morgan moses he leads the league and false starts and holds for any offensive lineman. That's on Bill Callahan and Jay Gruden. When you look at how we can get a lead and not maintain it, or we may have won our games in close fashion, no one likes to uh, clinch their ass and wait for those final seconds to wind down. And hopefully, hopefully we pull out a win. Because that's been a story of our life, not just this season, but ever since Jay Gruden came on board. And even before that. But this is the kind of shit that we deserve to be frustrated about. But DJ Swearinger being cut because he had a harsh critique of the defensive coordinator. If anything, they should have at least not allowed him to start for the last game. But to cut him, now he's going to Arizona. And I, I mean, I'm happy about that because the brother's got a job. But it could have been worse. Because the Eagles could have picked him up. And they need... They need a defensive back. And that would have just fucked us. That would have really fucked us up. Anyway, I got some food here. Got some canes. Going to feed my face because I'm hungry. But, uh, I mean, there's just so much that's happened. And we as Redskins fans, this is just not what we wanted. To be sitting on a couch for the postseason watching Dallas. And the only thing that's going to make us feel better because misery loves company is to see Dallas lose. They're already making it to the playoffs, but them to lose the first round, that's going to be the only measure of satisfaction that any of us have. But the dysfunction of the organization, and I can kind of play, blame uh, Daniel Snyder because he's the owner, but he spent about $850, $900 million for the team. So there's only so much that you can put on him. You got to call him the biggest fan because that's a lot of money. And you would feel the same way if you chucked out that kind of money. He's learned to step back from football shit and let football people do what they do while he just shuts up and, shuts up and signs checks. However, when it comes to Daniel Snyder and the fact that he's kept uh, Bruce Allen, who hasn't done shit, I can put that on him. The fact that he didn't cut Jay Gruden like he did Marty Schottenheimer after one season, I put that on him. But if he keeps Jay Gruden past this season... I'm going to have a lot of uh, harsh criticism for Daniel Snyder because I want him gone. I don't know who we can have as head coach. I don't know who wants to come to Washington, but definitely not Jay Gruden. He's trash. He's trash. Simple as that. And oh, by the way, um, he's upset because DJ Swearinger spoke to the media about the criticism of Greg Minerski. Did you see the press conference? for Josh Johnson's first interception, the ball was supposed to go to Doxson. What does Jay Gruden do? He, he throws Doxson under the bus in front of the media. This is something that they could have talked about watching game film, just in private. But for him to say, what well, interception Doxson went this way when it should have gone this way, he should have just come up with his canned response like he always does. I'm gonna have to look at game film and uh, come up and see what happened. But he threw Doxson under the bus, kind of like he threw RG3 under the bus a few years back, which lets you know just the kind of coach that he is. He's trash. 
anyway until the next time because i palavered longer than i should have if you're out there wherever you guys are be safe be happy enjoy your family i love you hell to the redskins